This is Twit. And now here's a, here's a case where um, the tech press got a little overheated. Um, but it's, it's certainly interesting, if nothing else. A team of seven Chinese researchers at three different universities have done some interesting work. And when I began writing this up, I used the term amazing work rather than interesting. Uh, Their work is amazing, but their results are only interesting due to the impractical number of preconditions that need to be established in order for this to work. And as we'll see, it renders it mostly of academic interest. Um, You know, stated another way, it kind of worked in the lab. Um, Despite that, predictably, most of the headline-driven tech press went nuts over this because the research paper, and I guess a lot of the press just read the headline, uh, it was published a few weeks ago, titled, Password Stealing Without Hacking, Wi-Fi Enabled Practical Keystroke Eavesdropping. Uh, none of that is true, but makes a great headline. Um Having actually read the paper, the issue I would take with their paper's title would be over their choice of the word practical. You know, however, um, you know, if you change the word practical to barely theoretically possible on a good day when the wind is blowing in the right direction, you know, unfortunately, that takes a lot of punch out of the headline. Yeah. And they do deserve to have some punch because what this group of researchers managed to pull off, given a bizarre side channel, is impressive, even if it isn't even remotely practical. Um, And, of course, we, we can never fully discount Bruce Schneier's observation that attacks never get worse. They only ever get better. Other way around. They never Never get better. They only get worse. No, 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 no. Oh, Attacks. I see what you're saying. It depends right. who, for whose point of view. From the bad guy's point of view, they only get correct. Right. Okay. <laughs> yes, because they're because they're they're the attacker. They're getting exactly. better. Yeah. If you're the victim, okay. they only get worse. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, the underlying enabling technology that like that these engineers went for is the result of very clever engineers trying to squeeze ever more bandwidth out of an already bandwidth-constrained environment. Ten years ago, a feature known as beamforming was introduced in Wi-Fi 5, more formally known as 802.11ac. The idea behind beamforming is simple physics, but it's still somewhat mind-boggling to imagine that consumers are able to purchase something that does this without even knowing about it. Modern Wi-Fi access points contain multiple antennas. Individually, each antenna is omnidirectional. You know, it sends and receives uniformly in all directions. But collectively, some magic can happen. If the access point wishes, for example, to send a stronger signal to a receiver that's directly in front of it, sending the Wi-Fi carriers in phase from its antennas will result in each antenna's carrier, you know, radio frequency carrier wave, summing with the others to produce the strongest signal where they are all in phase which is either directly in front of or directly in back of the antenna array. But what's cool is that off axis, the physical distance between the access points, individual antennas will cause the individual radio frequency carriers to become out of phase with one another. That is off axis. They will, the the carrier waves will stop summing together to create a stronger signal and will even work to cancel each other out. In other words, a properly driven antenna array is able to deliberately form transmission beams where the phases of their carrier signals align to strengthen their signals and it will create 
dead zones where their carriers cancel each other out. And this can also work in reverse on the receiving end to cause the array to be selective about where it is listening with the greatest sensitivity. Again, the physics of this is simple, but the idea that this is actually going on and that we all now just take it for granted boggles the mind. Okay, in order to pull this off in practice, the access point and each of its many mobile subscriber radios need to establish an explicit side channel where they're able to interact not about the actual user data that may be flowing back and forth, but about the channel's metadata, which describes their wireless relationship with all this beam forming in real time. There's a whole other dialogue going on in the background. This metadata is known as BFI, beam forming feedback information. In real time, Wi-Fi 5 802.11ac devices, including smartphones, are sending back detailed information about the signal they're receiving from the access point base station to which they're connected. Now, okay, remember back in 2010, Apple hit a road bump on their way to world domination with the iPhone 4. It turned out that the redesign of the phone's antenna system resulted in the phone's radio performance being unduly sensitive to its user's grip and hand position. This was, you know, the, the, the term that was coined for this was antenna gate, which led to Apple's official statement at the time, which read, quote, this is Apple, gripping any mobile phone will result in some attenuation of its antenna performance with certain places being worse than others, depending on the placement of the antennas. This is a fact of life for every wireless phone. If you ever experience this on your iPhone 4, avoid gripping it in the lower left corner in a way that covers both sides of the black strip in the metal band, or simply use one of many available cases, unquote, they said. In other words, this physics of radio and antennas and the radio attenuating properties of people's water-laden hands and fingers remains true today. Though in the case of Apple's iPhones, they've learned some valuable lessons and it's less of a problem for them. What these intrepid Chinese researchers discovered and then wrestled to the ground was that the motions of any smartphone user's fingers as they move them around their phone's touchscreen while entering passwords, passcodes, and so forth, you know, what should be completely private information will naturally affect their phone's real-time signal reception. And that today's 802.11ac devices will be broadcasting the details of their phone's hand motion affected signal reception in the clear and without encryption in real time back to the access point and also to anyone else nearby who might be interested in receiving and receiving and interpreting it okay so the interpretation is the trick which is why I characterize this as barely theoretically possible on a good day when the wind is blowing in the right direction. Essentially, they're getting nothing more than the one-dimensional received radio signal strength information, and they're managing to turn this into, well, something. If they train, if they highly train, a powerful recognition system on a single specific setting and individual who's not changing the grip on their phone, where the system has already learned to associate the beam forming feedback information related signals to what's being entered, then under all of those constraints, their research shows that they are, they are able to determine 
a single numerical key that the user has entered, and we should really say re-entered, with 88.9% accuracy, considering that all they're receiving is the smartphone's received signal strength in real time, that's still impressive. But despite all of their work, and through no fault of theirs, it falls far shy of justifying headlines such as these three, which were just recently printed. Exploit steals passwords by tapping into keystrokes. And new cybersecurity threat, WikiEve, allows hackers to steal passwords. And finally, using free Wi-Fi? Better watch your passwords. In other words, you don't, <laughs> you don't have to be worried about anything. You know, if anyone may have encountered any of those or similar headlines in the past few weeks, I think it's safe to say that your personal keystrokes remain safe from arbitrary <laughs> harvesting in public <laughs> Wi-Fi settings. What a relief. You know, <laughs> yes. Bruce is right that attacks only ever get better. That is the strength of attacks only ever increases. But the limitations inherent in this one uh, to a single previously trained instance means that it's only of theoretical interest at best. And I did want to just note that while I was looking up Apple's iPhone 4 statement, I was greeted by Engadget's pop-up, which said, review your global privacy control preferences. And it said, you're using global privacy control, right? How dare you? They, they said, this leads to a lower quality experience on Yahoo by blocking certain editorial content, including embedded tweets and YouTube videos, and this is what they really care about, third-party ads that are relevant to your interests. Anyway, we've, we've discussed this before, where it then goes talking about the technical identifiers which they use, and we, went, we looked at those too, and they're truly horrifying. So anyway, I was offered the option of allow or don't allow. And, you know, I already got what I wanted, so I said thanks anyway and, and went elsewhere. Come join us on This Week in Enterprise Tech Expert Coast and I talk about the enterprise world. We're joined by industry professionals and trailblazers like CEOs, CIOs, CTOs, CISOs, every acronym role plus IT pros and marketeers. And we talk about technology, software plus services, security, you name it, everything under the sun. You know what? I learn something each and every week and I bet you, you will too. So definitely join us. And of course, check out the twit.tv website and click on This Week in Enterprise Tech. Subscribe today.